All right, how you guys doing today? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you, and we are going to take a look at some more examples of using similar right triangles and applying the geometric mean theorem, but this time we're going to be looking at those problems that are involving the leg. So let's kind of talk about this real quickly. First thing you got to be able to do is recognize where the legs are on the triangle that is the biggest triangle of either of the two diagrams shown. Now, of course, you should be able to recognize that this piece right here is a leg, and so is this piece right here of the biggest triangle. Likewise, if we reorient it, then our leg is going to be in that spot as well as right here. So all of those are going to be the leg of your biggest right triangle. Now we're going to use a formula as we get into working with this, just kind of similar to how we did before. So let's take a look at how to set that formula up. Now we're going to deal with this leg here that's on the left hand side that's outlined by the letter D or on the bottom that's also the letter D. Now the leg is a geometric mean so that means the leg is going to serve as the geometric mean so the geometric mean goes in this slot and up in here. Now the other two letters, the B and the C, those two pieces are going to be part of the hypotenuse, the two pieces of the hypotenuse of your biggest triangle. Now in this slot, I like to put the entire length of the hypotenuse, which is just B plus C, whatever numbers or expressions might be in those slots. And then down here is going to be the part of the hypotenuse that is closest to or touches the leg that serves as your geometric mean, which in this case is just D. So our geometric mean is D, so between B and C, the part that touches D is going to be part B. So B would go in that slot. So this is going to be your general formula if your leg is the one that's kind of on the left side or right here on the bottom like that. You've got the two parts of the hypotenuse there, but we've got another leg, so that one has a slightly different formula. For this, type of situation. We'll kind of have the same setup. We're going to take our geometric mean, which is our leg, and our leg in this case is E. So E is going to get slotted here and here. And then in this spot, you're still going to have the entire length of the hypotenuse, which is just B plus C. The only difference is between those two pieces, B and C, of the entire hypotenuse, the one that touches the leg E is C. So this is where our formula is going to be slightly different, but our setup is going to be generally the same. The geometric mean is going to be slotted in the two spots where E is. The entire hypotenuse is going to go where the B plus C is. And then the part of the hypotenuse that touches the geometric mean or that leg is going to go where C is. So let's go ahead and practice a couple of examples and kind of play around with this. And I think you guys will pick this up. So here's our first example, and what we're going to do is just go ahead and get right into this. We're just going to set it right up. So our geometric mean is going to be our leg, which in this case is represented by x. So x is going to go in these two slots. Now, what I like to do is go ahead and show this part for the entire hypotenuse. I'm going to add 4 and 3 because that makes the entire hypotenuse. Now those two parts, the 4 and the 3, the parts that closest to the x or touches that x leg, is 4. So 4 is going to go down in the lower right hand corner slot. Now 4 and 3 that's easy to add so we're just going to have 7 over x is going to be equal to x over 4. Now when you cross multiply you'll end up with x squared equals 28. Now remember when you take the square root you have to do plus or minus the square root of 28. When you're in Algebra 2 and other courses above that, that's going to be an important piece for you to remember to take both the positive and negative square root. Now when we work with this, you have to simplify square root of 28, so that's going to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 7. Now the square root of 4, of course, is just 2, and then the square root of 7, we can't simplify that. Now in geometry, since we're dealing with distance, we're only going to deal with the positive square root, so we're going to have just 2 square roots of 7. So the value of x in this case is just 2 square roots of 7. Now let's go ahead and try this example. So again, we've got our leg as a geometric mean, and our leg is represented by x in this case. And when I refer to the leg, I mean the leg of the biggest triangle. So that's going to go here and here 
are going to be the two slots for x. Now the length of the entire hypotenuse, they actually give this, so this spot is going to be 9. 9 is going to represent the length of the entire hypotenuse. But here's where you have to be super careful because a lot of people would just slide 4 in here, but the part of the hypotenuse that touches the leg X is actually going to be 5. Now to get 5, you just have to kind of think to yourself, okay, 9 minus 4, that's going to give me 5. So that's how you get that value of 5. And that goes up here in this slot. Once you've got that figured out, the rest of it is just going to be the same thing procedurally as you did before. So at this point, I bet you could probably hit pause, finish this one on your own, and then come back and check it out and see how you did. All right, Rockstar, how'd you do with this one? Where our final answer is going to be three, x equals 3 square roots of 5. Hopefully, you came up with that one. If not, just go through and double check your arithmetic because that's where most people will make a mistake on this one. Now let's go ahead and take a look at two more examples. Here we go again. Our geometric mean is represented by what, in this case? Our x. So that's going to get slotted there. Now I bet you could probably do this part here in your head. And then in this lower left-hand slot, or lower right-hand slot, we would put 3. Because that's the part of the hypotenuse that's closest to where my geometric mean is, or the x. So 4 plus 3 is 7 over x equals x over 3. Now when I cross multiply I get x squared equals 21 and then x is going to be plus or minus the square root of 21 and that can't be simplified so all we have to do is know that since we're dealing with the length of the leg of the right triangle we're just going to have the square root of 21 for the value of x and that's it. Not too bad. Now there's one more example that I want you to try, and that's this one right here. So go ahead, get this one set up, try it on your own, and then come back and check your answer. So go ahead and hit pause now, and then come on back and see how you did. All right, Rockstar, how'd you do? Hopefully you came up with three square roots of two as your final answer for the value of our leg here, which is represented by the letter X. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to give you guys a few more examples when you're taking a look at using the leg as the geometric mean for a right triangle. So thanks for watching this one. Hopefully by now you'll get this down. It just takes a little bit of practice, but I think if you follow these patterns and these steps, you'll be solving these problems no problem at all from now and in the future. Best of luck to you. Thanks for watching. You guys have a great day, and I'll catch up with you later. Peace out.